Hey, Jesse here with Nomad Bears. So glad you could join us today. Today we're going to talk about resumes, specifically TEFL resumes or teaching abroad resumes. Now these are a little bit different than your regular resume, so make sure that you don't just send off your regular resume and expect for the best. There are a few things you want to look for. Number one, in the format. So make sure that you got your name, your contact information, and all of that right at the start. But make sure you also include a picture. A picture is really important. People want to see what sort of person they're hiring when they're teaching abroad. So make sure you have a nice, clear picture at the top of your resume. Second, talk about your personal statement. Make sure that you have a personal statement that talks directly about what you want to, why you want to teach, why you may want to teach children versus adults, why you want to teach in whatever country you choose to teach in. So make sure you have that nice and clear. After that, go in and go straight for your education. Make sure you have those qualifications and because the people that are looking at your resume are going to be looking specifically for those qualifications. And so that's your TEFL certification or Cambridge certification, whichever one you have. Make sure you have that nice right at the top and then your university degree, if necessary, have that right below it. And have any accolades that you have related to that clear and at the top. After that, focus on your skills, five to 10 skills that you need to highlight um, to make sure that you get that extra little bit. So you have a sort of rundown overview of what you need for your resume. Those skills need to be related to teaching abroad. So maybe if you have a foreign language, focus on that. If you have good communication skills, and if you have experience being abroad. Your work experience comes next. Include the date, location, and name of the place you work. Use a generic name. Instead of using coffee specialist or partner at Starbucks, just use barista, all right? Be very specific. Uh, don't be too specific with the name, but be very specific with the description of it. Make sure to quantify anything you do. If you have that barista position, say, I. Um, made drinks for 100 people per hour at a quick rate in a downtown busy location. Those sort of things, those numbers really appeal to um, people trying to hire. So make sure you have that. After that, focus on any volunteer experience you have. So volunteer experience being if you just tutored or if you are actually abroad. Tutoring is a really important one because those are ones that relate directly to teaching, but experience being abroad or working abroad is important too, because that shows that you're not going to be hurt by the culture shock if you go and start living in another country. After that, tip number two, your resume is for getting you an interview, nothing more. It's important that you have an in a resume that shows off who you are, brag a little bit, but beyond that, your resume is only going to be maybe a starting conversation starter for once you actually have your resume or your interview. And we're going to talk more about interviews next week, but make sure that's what your resume is. It's your conversation starter. It shows, it makes, means that you're going to stick out from a crowd of other resumes and it highlights exactly what the people looking need to see, which is your education, your qualifications, and any time spent abroad. Number three, your language. Your language is really important when you're applying abroad. It needs to be perfect English, but it needs to be simple English. Because more often than not, that resume is going to be put into Google Translate and switched over to whatever language is easier. So don't use any uh, colloquialisms or strange words. Keep it simple and keep it to the point. And make sure that all your tenses line up and that it's a clean, easy to read resume. Tip number four, keep it short and sweet. Try to aim for a one page resume. If you can, or if you have to do two, but try to aim for that one page resume. That one page is gonna be easy to read, clean, and people don't wanna flip it over and read another page. Make it as easy as possible for your job manager, okay? If you need to take away some positions, go for it. If you need to highlight only certain parts of your experience or you only need to do three years of backtrack, 
That's okay, but keep it short and sweet. Last and final tip, which is actually pretty important for teaching abroad, is if you don't have experience. If you don't have experience, if you don't have work experience or volunteer experience, and I've been talking about that, instead focus on your skills. Instead of just having five skills, focus on ten skills. Explain them a bit. Back them up with information. In your actual information, say that you are good at communication. Back that up by talking about a customer service position you might have had or a volunteer extracurricular position you had. Focus on any tutoring jobs. Say that's volunteer experience that you tutored and worked with others, right? Those are all really important to show that you have those skills because when you actually get here and when you start teaching abroad, you're going to learn a lot more on the job, but they want to make sure that you have those skills to be able to learn and to progress and that you're comfortable being abroad. And that's the biggest thing. For when you want to come and teach abroad, make sure that you highlight that you have the qualifications and that you're able to be abroad and that you're comfortable and w willing to adjust to a new environment and that you have the skills to learn and adapt to the new environment as well as learning and adapting to being a teacher. That's all we have for you today. Next week we're going to talk more about interviews and about the TEFL interview and what it, how it's different than other interviews you might do. So stay tuned for that and have a great week.